Let's build an antenna out of scrap material and put it on the air. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. Today I wanted to run a little bit of an experiment. Now there's a lot of commercial antennas available to us, but something I encourage everyone to do is actually build their own antennas. You're going to learn a lot through the process and I guarantee you, you're going to save a bit of money. So I'm going to uh, start with this little connector today. Now, this was one that I just had in my junk box. And this is going to be the basis of our antenna. Also have uh, out of the junk drawer just some little ring terminals. If I can get those to focus on camera, maybe there we go. Just some little ring terminals that we're going to be using uh, for this project as well. But I believe I have enough scrap wire laying around to uh, build this antenna with. And then we're going to uh, check the SWR on it after we get it built. And then we're actually going to put it on the air tonight during the Aries net. So let's go ahead and see what we can find laying around the house. All right, so outside in the garage, this is the wire right there that I saw hanging up out here the other day. And I believe that's going to be enough for us. You can tell just from uh, looking at that stuff, that's pretty old and grungy. It's been laying out here for quite some time, but I think that's going to work perfect for the antenna. Now, we do need something to mount it to, so let's go check the shed and see what we can find. All right, right up there on top is the PVC pipe that I'm going to use, but all I'm seeing in a three-quarter inch is a full length of pipe, and I really don't want to cut that down just for this antenna project, but... Looking over here in the corner, I do believe I have spotted a shorter piece of three-quarter inch. And I was right. And as you can probably tell by looking behind me, I don't throw very much away. This piece is a little ragged, kind of cut crooked on this end, but we can straighten that up and this should work just fine. All right, so we're looking to build a quarter wave antenna and the formula for that is 234 divided by the frequency. In this case, I want the frequency to come in around 146. So we're gonna take that 234 divided by 136 and that gives us 1.6. Now to get that in inches, we're gonna multiply that by 12. And multiplying that by 12 gives us 19.23 inches or roughly 19 and a quarter. Now I am going to cut this just a little bit long so that when we put it on the meter, we can trim it down and dial it in exactly where we want to be. All right, so here's that wire that we drug out of the garage. You can see that stuff's been out there for quite a while. Uh, it's a little nasty, but we're going to go ahead and strip the outer jacket off of this. And what we'll end up with is three pieces of wire. We've got the bare piece of copper right there. We've got the black and then we've got the white. And I changed my mind a little bit before we actually strip the outer jacket. I'm going to go ahead and cut this to length. I cleaned up the one end that had those three pieces hanging out there. We want to make this just a little bit long. So you can see I went uh, a little bit over 19 and a quarter, maybe an eighth or three sixteenths over. Let's go ahead and make this cut. That's going to give us three pieces of wire. We need a total of five pieces of wire for this particular antenna. Now, just as a quick sanity check, I'm just going to make sure that that copper wire will fit into that center connector because that's uh, where one piece is going to go and then we're going to attach the other four pieces to the outer corners of this uh, coax adapter here. So after doing that a couple of times, that leaves us with six pieces. We'll just get rid of one of those bare ones since we don't need it and we'll work with these remaining five pieces. Now, one of the other things I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to keep this as basic as possible. I'm trying not to use any specialized tools because if you're a brand new operator, you might not have tools like these auto crimpers. By the way, if you don't have them, you should. I'll leave a link down in the description. But if you didn't have those, you could just uh, take a knife, score that insulation on the outside, and go ahead and pull that insulation off. That will work equally as well. And in fact, 
I want to see if we didn't do anything with uh, checking the SWR, could we actually use this antenna just based on the calculation that we did in the very beginning of this video. We will check that when we get outside and to that point. All right, so let's get one of these little ring terminals connected to four pieces of this wire. So I'm just going to slide it right through there. And again, I'm trying not to use any specialized tools. So I'm just going to take my Leatherman and do these cramps. It should be perfectly okay as long as you get a good connection on there. So we'll give it a couple of little squeezes here. Again, guys, if you've got proper crimpers, go ahead and use them. This is just more of an experiment for me to see what's possible. And if you happen to be a new tech with a very limited toolkit, I'm hoping to show you how to get this done. We're not going to be able to avoid using a soldering iron, but I'll show you a fairly inexpensive one that I've got that is uh, very portable as well. Let's go ahead and get the rest of these crimps done real quick. All right, I think we've got a good connection on each of those. Just make sure you tug on it a little bit. Make sure that's not gonna come off on you. Now, let's go ahead and get that center wire soldered into the connector. So as you can see, I'm using a butane soldering iron here. These are fairly inexpensive on Amazon. Something else you might wanna take a look at is this pine sole. This is by Pine64. This is a USB-C soldering iron. And it works really well, but on uh, something that's a little bit larger, this butane torch is probably going to work a little bit better for me. Hopefully make this a little bit better job. Now, I'm not using any special tools, so no helping hands here. I've just literally got this laying on the desk. And let's see if we can actually get this uh, soldered without having to uh, resort to any other special tools. Hanging on to this thing may be a little bit of a trick, but let's see what happens here. All right, having no weight on this connector was proving to be more difficult than I originally thought. So instead of using helping hands, I just went ahead and grabbed a pair of vice grips. All I need is a little bit of weight, and I should be able to get this accomplished. And yeah, that's working a whole lot better than it was a second ago. And there we go. It ain't got to be pretty. It's just got to hold together. And quick little tug test. That's holding together just fine. If you want to, you could also put a meter on it and check continuity between the center post right here and the wire itself. So let's go ahead and test that real quick right there to the center and out to the center wire. We know we've got a good connection now. So if you do have a meter, definitely go ahead and check that. All right, now that we've got all of our wire made up, the last thing to do is take some of these uh, number six by 32 screws and attach these wires that we put the ring terminals on right to the corners of each, uh, each corner of this connector. So let's go ahead and get that done real quick. All right, so after I got everything tightened down, you can see the vertical wire coming up right there and then to the best of your ability, try to keep these pieces of wire running away from each corner piece. This one's off just a little bit. We may adjust that in just a second. It's also a little hard to get it up here on the workbench so you guys can see it easily. Let's go ahead and get this mounted to a mast and check the SWR on it. Now, how you decide to mount this antenna is really just going to depend on what you've got on hand. I'm going to use a gray fiberglass mask today and I'm just attaching it to this T-post. And then I'm using, I believe they call this uh, tomato wire or something like that on Amazon. I'll leave a link if I can find it. This is great stuff to have on hand just for quickly securing things like uh, this mast to this piece of angle iron. All right, so what we've got going here is this is that three quarter inch of PVC pipe and we've got the coax connected and passing back down through the pipe so that holds on to it now we do want these kind of bent down at a 45 degree angle i'll take care of that in just a second and guys i know what you may be saying right now is i don't have all of these pieces and parts on hand or in a junk box or whatever well i totally understand that i didn't have all of these pieces and parts either the first year or two of uh having a ham license however if you have to go to the hardware store and buy something like these number six screws just buy some extras toss them in a box because sooner or later you're going to need them for another project all right let's get this on the air and see how the swr looks 
All right, so there it is. Uh, looks like that one piece of wire coming off, that one white wire on the uh, right, is maybe a little bit more than a 45 degree angle, but it's gonna have to suffice. Remember, we're just trying to make do here and get something on the air. All right, I am working on the ground and in the shade, but I'm hoping that we can get uh, this screen so you can read it, and maybe that airplane will go away here in just a second as well and get rid of some of that background noise. Now, one thing to note here, I am using ABR 400. I do plan to use this with just a basic HT or maybe my 705 this evening. Both of those are gonna have limited power, so we don't wanna lose that in the coax. All right, we got this on. Let's go ahead and give it a single band right here and see what we've got. Look at that, guys. What is that? 1.09 at 146.52. Now that's not exactly the frequency I'm going to be using tonight, but that's close enough. And I didn't do any trimming. I didn't change anything. I just put it up in the air. Now let's go ahead and see if we can, whoop, I didn't mean to cut it off. Let's see if we can sweep the entire two meter band and find out what we've got there. So let's just do uh, free and Look at that dip. Look at that dip. I don't think there's anything to complain about right there. Let's see, can we get zoomed in on that a little bit? Look at that dip. Guys, I am loving it. It's a little bit long, and I expected that because I did cut it too long. But look at that. I mean, we're less than 1.5, except for the very right edge of that sweep. So I'm gonna call that a win. Now, the true test, though, is putting it on the air this evening. All right, guys, we're getting close to net time. I'll show you my setup here in just a second. Hopefully, this camera is going to perform well enough in low light. Never tried it this way before. Let me pick you guys up here, though, and spin you around so you can see the setup here. There is the laptop where we're running uh, FL Digi. And then over here is the ICOM 705. And I want you guys to notice something right up there in the top right corner. Hopefully you can see that. I'm literally going to run this at 10% power, which is equivalent of one watt. And I think, based on a little bit of testing I did off camera, I think that's gonna work out just fine. And there's a shot of the antenna. I know you can't really see it up there, but I promise it's right up there on top of that post, right up there. And that's up, guys, I'm guessing maybe 15 feet or so. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera down for a minute. As soon as the net pops on, I'll bring you guys back in when I'm ready to check in and let's see if they have any trouble hearing me. Next, please. All right, let's see if we can get into it. Kilo Mike. Four, Alpha, Charlie, Kilo, Jason, Murfreesboro. Bill, Murfreesboro. And I think I double with somebody. Control recognizes November 3, Tango, Echo, Papa. You're only running Tommy, one watch. you got to be careful Kilo, of that. Mike, four, November, November, Yankee, Bill, next to please. Kilo, Mike, four, Alpha, Charlie, Kilo, Kilo, Mike 4, Alpha, Charlie, Kilo, Jason in Murfreesboro. Kilo, India, 4, November, Delta, Let's November. See if Net Control David. recognizes us. Net Control recognizes Kilo, Mike 4, Alpha, Charlie, uh, Kilo, <laughs> Jason. And Kilo India 4, November, David, November, David. Uh, next two. Guys, that's literally running one watt of power 15 miles away from the repeater. Kilo, now, we'll go ahead and do it on the digital net here in just a few minutes. All right, so it looks like uh, the net control operator for the digital net was unavailable tonight. So unfortunately, we're not going to get to try it on the digital net. However, I have no doubt that that one watt of power would have made it without any trouble because it's on a different repeater than the voice uh, net was just a minute ago. And uh, that repeater is actually closer to me. So I have no doubt that I would have been able to have made that. So guys, get out there and try your hand at building your own antenna. You might be surprised at just how efficient it is. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 
Hey guys, can one of you give me a quick signal report? Just built a homebrew antenna and wanted to give it a quick test if I could. KM4ACK. Outstanding. Well, thank you for coming back to me, and I'm actually recording some of this audio right now. This is going to be a upcoming video. If you've got a couple of seconds, I'm actually going to start lowering the power and uh, just see if you uh, notice any drop-off in the audio quality. All right, we can do that. Go right ahead, sir. All right, so I'm just working with an HT. I was on full power, and I've dropped down to medium power. Uh, did you notice any change in the audio quality? Uh, you're still coming in full quiet. All right, there's another reduction. I'm now down to low power. I believe that is one watt, and I've got one more power level here for extra low that we'll test next. But uh, how's it sound on low power? All right, one last check then here. Uh, this is extra low power, extra low power. Uh, how much hiss is in there now? Yeah, that right there is, you're just barely coming up over the top of it uh, on, on, uh, on this end. All right, so it was a little bit more difficult to read then on extra low power. All right, I'll take that for a win, though. Uh, I'm back to high power now, so you shouldn't have any trouble. I greatly appreciate you uh, giving me those reports, and I'll say 7-3. KM4ACK. Hi right there, Mr. Jason. Uh, we do appreciate it, and uh, you may not even remember me, but uh, uh, see, back in 2020, I believe, in September, at a dental office of all places, uh, you're one of the uh, VE examiners down there, and I appreciated uh, all the help you did down there. Y'all did uh, good work. Uh, 73 blessings from my home to yours, KO4 Hotel, Papa Charlie. Hey, thanks again. Glad we got to bump into one another at a VE session. All right, I'll uh, talk to you later down the log. 73 KM4 ACK. And I'll take that as a win. <laughs>